Hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks. I thought I'd treat myself to a new tank. I've not had much time lately for playing tanks, and I really wanted the Revenant Craft Panther, and knew that there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to put the time in to win it for free. So I had £21 burning a hole in my pocket, and I thought, what a better way of spending it than buying the tank outright. And I'm really glad I did. So Revenant Craft is this animated corpse, a visible ghost, kind of like a ghost zombie that returns from the, from the grave to terrorize the living in his panther tank. And uh, it's just a beautiful looking tank. It's got this Zimmerit coating on it, which is a paste that they the Germans applied to cover the metal um, to make it non-magnetic so that any landmines wouldn't stick to the tanks. And if you go to Bovington, they've got a Tiger II covered in this stuff and it looks absolutely amazing. So it's basically a Panther. And if you compare it to the Tier 7 Panther, it's got a, a weaker engine by 170 horsepower. It's got the same gun with a slightly longer aim of 0.2 seconds, which is neither here nor there. It's got the same penetration, but 175 more damage. It's got the same hull armor, 85 on the front and 50 to 40 all round. The turret is very, very weak. It's 15 millimeters all round, whereas the Panther has got 120 on the front of its turret. And the view range is also 20 meters less. So this tank is a little bit on the short sighted side. It's got one of the sh fastest shell velocities of all the tanks, medium tanks at tier seven. It's the heaviest by far at 45 tons which is about 15 tons heavier than any of the other tanks. And it's also got one of the slowest hull traverses and a slightly limiting, but okay gun depression of eight degrees. So my, my personal experience um, of this tank is it's got, it's chassis rotation is poor, especially on soft ground, and that'll be down to its weight. It's got a nice accurate gun with a decent reload it's 12 and a half rounds per minute, which is a just under five second reload time, which is brilliant. It's got very effective front armor. It's only 85 millimeters thick, but it's nicely sloped. And if you angle this tank, you will be surprised at how many shots will bounce. And if you come up against this tank, then just hit it in the lower glacis or just aim for that really, really weak turret. Um, it's got built in silver and XP multipliers. You don't get any preferential tiering with this. I thought you did when I first got it because I was top tier for the first couple of games. I thought, oh, this is great. And then I got thrown into a tier 10 game and got completely annihilated as you do if you're in a tier seven medium tank. Overall, it's just a good tank, but it's just got that sort of German sluggishness about it. But look at the tank. It looks absolutely awesome. And today in my garage, it's just gone into phantom mode and it's got eyes and the engine lights up red and every time you move or accelerate, the red glows and it looks absolutely amazing. So I just rolled it out and I thought I'd show you guys what it looks like. So we'll start with the Halloween map, seeing as we're in phantom mode now. It's Dead City, it's an encounter battle, it's Himmelsdorf with a graveyard at the center where the cap is our mission is to capture and, and our Let's side consists of two craft panthers and the rest of specters and you'll just see how that how it glows when it when it gets traveling and stops when it stops it's yeah really quite a nice touch but i do think they've adjusted the, the tank slightly for this level oh here comes a lichen oh nice shot in Absolutely oblivious to me. So either he has no idea I'm there, or I really am in phantom mode. He just can't see me, but uh, now he's seen me. And that is a relentless rate of fire. And I don't know if that's been adjusted for this level, or whether the Lycan does shoot that quickly. That's quite awesome. But yes, this tank won't go 
beyond 20 kilometers an hour, whereas normally it would go up to 55. It'll take a while to get there, but on this level it doesn't. So I think they've adjusted the tanks for this spectre level. So I'm just going to go along the tracks here and head towards the centre. That seems to be where all the action is. And oh, it's like being back in the Matilda again. Come on. Nearly there. Right, we have some targets now. Right, so there's the Spectre. Oh, don't know where that went. And it seems that everybody's shooting plasma, except me. I'm just shooting real shells. I may be some half-dead zombie ghost in a tank, but it seems like the tank is quite real. Right. First kill. Hurrah. Oh, second kill. Of course, I forgot about the Lycan at the beginning. So just heading into the into the graveyard. Tombstones everywhere. Moaning zombie sounds. And it's just the two of us. It's me and Viperine Mouse. And we put a nice bit of teamwork together to finish this game, which is rather lovely. Just, aha, here we go. Oh, no idea where that auto aim went. Right, one spectre down. And we just need to take this. And Viperine Mouse finishes that one off. Brilliant. So, right, we're left with a rock hard Goraninch KV5. So, Viperine Mouse has legged it. And I'm hoping that the KV5 is going to follow so I can come around the back and start putting shots in the engine. But the trouble is at 20 kilometers an hour, I just don't have the speed to get there quick enough, so that plan doesn't quite work. So it looks like the KV-5 is going for the cap to draw us in. Viperine Mouse is asking for help, so I'm going in to help. I'm on my way, mate. And I just need to know which way the KV-5 is facing, because I haven't got a clue. And yeah, it's facing this way. Viperine puts some plasma in, which doesn't do any good. And the KV's firing plasma too. Right, here we go. That shot bounced. Can't really see what's going on through the flames. And ah, there's a craft panther hole right in front. So this is where Viperine's just giving the KV-5 a run for his money. KV-5's not the slightest bit interested in me. He's determined to take Viperine out. So I'm just going to sit here and just keep putting shots where I can in that rock-hard turret. He's on fire anyway, so he's, he's, he's losing health bit by bit. And I'm just going to keep plugging the KV with shots. Viperine is running rings around it. Brilliant. Round and round. Nearly there. And there we go. So a nice bit of teamwork between me and Viperine Mouse. Thank you for that, mate. And yeah, falling back. No, I wasn't falling back. That was supposed to be an affirmative, but... That's me and my radial commands for you, and well, it doesn't really matter about the result because that was just a bit of fun in phantom mode. But actually, I did come top. <laughs>
Right, so it's time for a real game. We're on cliff, it's raining, my brand new tank is getting wet. It's a tier 7 game, we're top tier, hurrah. And this was my first game in the Craft Panther. I've only played three games in it. The third game was the Halloween map, the Dead City, and this was the first. And, well, it's a new tank, what do you do? You're not really sure how a new tank's going to play. So I'm heading for the general sort of centre of the map, lighthouse area. Wasn't really sure what equipment to equip this tank with. It's quite short sighted. So I've equipped it how I equip most of my mediums with binoculars for some long range sighting and optics just to give that weak view range a bit of a boost. But you can see it, it gets up to speed quite nicely, we're up to 43 kilometers an hour. It's a little bit slow on the acceleration, but it, once it gets there, it, you can keep the speed up nicely. But it, it's a bit of a haul on gradients, uh, that the heavy tank and the weak engine does mean it's not really suited for hill climbing. So, that medium's going up towards the lighthouse, so we're going to go on the spot more into the centre of the map here, behind these bushes. We'll fluff an auto aim on the T29. And we just get a shot on the tracks. And we bounce a shot from the T29. And we bounce another shot. And that's where that front plate, if you've got it angled, is quite reliable at bouncing shots. So I'm just going to go to the top here and have a peek over. I just need to be careful because it only has the eight degrees of gun depression it's it's not great and it's normally a bit quicker uphill I think I've got stuck on a rock all right there we go that's better crawl our way to the top here right there's a t43 nice auto aim aim the second shot and we miss Right, they've disappeared, so I should have disappeared for them. So I decide, on reflection, not a great decision, with a tank that doesn't like climbing and poor gun depression, that I'm going to climb up a nice steep hill and then try and aim down at the enemy. So, probably not one of my best decisions, but that's the way I've gone. That was the decision of the day. That's where I'm going. Oh, come on. Keep pedalling. Nearly at the top. Right, and we shall see what we can see. The aim is to just hold still, get the binoculars on. And right, the T-43's down there. I'm just trying to see if I can get a shot down, but of course, what's going to happen is that T-43's going to light me up. And now I'm there for all to see. And... I take a shot from right over about J6. No idea what it is. And it just appears on the map. It's a heavy over there. No idea what heavy it is. So our guys are steaming round the east flank, round the coast. So I want to try and delicately balance myself on a rock, get my gun down, and try and get some shots in the top. I want to fluff that one. A little bit further, that's better, and yeah, I didn't want to be slipping down there. In my mind, this was going to be a lot more stylish than how it panned out, and yeah, I just... But I got away with it, and the tank wasn't the slightest bit interested in me. Right, so, we'll just keep on going. So there's a heavy, there it is. Still don't know what it is. And it's, behind, it's an M6 behind the rock. So this is where you'll see the Cross Panther is fast enough to stay just ahead of the M6's turret traverse and keep putting the shots in every four seconds. Nice and quick. And 
M6 isn't interested in us now. And we finish them off. But RT gets a shot in. So repair the tracks. Let's go in for RT. There it is, the GW Panther. Carefully aimed shot here. And no idea where that went. Somebody's tracked them. We get a shot in. They've been tracked again. And we get to finish them off. So that was a nice bit of teamwork. Right. That shot flew over. Miss a blind shot. That's because the Crusader's going the other way. And they're finished off. So one heavy to go at E2. So for me, a very average, kind of normal game, really. Ten penetrating shots, a couple of criticals, three tanks spotted, and two tanks destroyed. Can't help thinking that's quite a quite a good game for a medium. Bit of spotting, bit of destroying. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. A very normal game for me. And we'll see how that pays off at the end. We just need to get this heavy finished off, which doesn't take long. Right. Mission accomplished. How did we do? Ah, not bad at all. 53 and a half grand in silver, 1,900 XP. And yeah, just a very ordinary game. It's a nice looking tank that seems to play quite well.